Hi. You look gorgeous. Pretty. Pretty <laughs> well, thank you. Old, um, those are great. Uh, you know what? I uh, I got to bling it out every single way I can. <laughs> That's how heck I Yeah, work. heck yeah. Yeah, you look I love it. beautiful. I love it. Thank you so much for saying yes to this, Kimmy. I'm so excited. I'm really excited that you asked and I'm yeah, super grateful. So thank you so much for taking a chance on this girl here. I <laughs> it. You know what? Um, I, you, I've followed you for a while and I just, I really enjoy like your videos and just everything, your boldness and everything that you're putting out into the world. And so I'm excited to talk about surrender. As I got to thinking about it, I was like, this is such a cool, like, um, way to look at it through like your eyes and how you see it. What came, yeah. up, what came up for you? Like when I mentioned surrender, like what did that, what did you think of that? Well, first of all, you know, I was, after I like calmed down from being excited to hear from you, <laughs> um, I, I felt like, you know, this is such a important, rich topic really, you know, and it's such a common theme in kink and BDSM. Um, so, I mean, I was super excited to bring my perspective because, um, yeah, there, there are so many aspects of surrender in the work that I do, not only as a dominatrix, but as a somatic healer yeah. um, as well. So there's both components as well. Yeah. I, I saw that you're a somatic therapist as well. And you talked to about getting in touch with your life force energy, which I am super into. And um, I believe that overall, many of us don't surrender enough in getting in touch with that. And of course, with the kink and BDSM too, a, that's a major thing, which I want to touch on too. So I wonder like what, when people get in touch with those things, what kind of results do you see? Like, are their lives more fulfilled holistically? It's interesting because I believe, and a lot of people believe this, that the way we approach sex and our sexuality is basically how we approach life in a sense, because it's that important. It's like the base of who we are. It's our power. It's our creativity. It's our aliveness. And if there's some, um, you know, sort of issues around the sexuality aspect of who we are, it's going to ripple out in a lot of different ways, especially in our relationships and the way that we show up in the world. So being able to get in touch with that part of ourselves um, is a direct result in the fulfillment we get in our lives, in a sense. Yeah, so, yeah I, I think the, the sexual energy, while a lot of people feel uncomfortable about the subject if they thought of it more in the sense of this like eros the aliveness um the 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 source of creation there's a bit more um you know understanding around the importance of it a bit more. yeah i mean it's part of our humanity and part of who we are uh, and our dna and our makeup and everything about us it's like inescapable it is part of creation and i like thinking of it like that um so when people come to you, do they need the push to surrender or do you think that they've already surrendered or they, maybe they've come this far and they just need that extra push, right? So, you know, just think about kink for a second and the word BDSM. Yeah. Like if you break down the acronym of BDSM, the BD stands for bondage discipline, the D and the S in the middle stands for domination, submission, and the S and M at the end stands for sadism and masochism. So while kinky play encompasses a lot of different activities, the concept of power exchange is a really big component of BDSM. Um, domination versus submission is sort of like control versus surrender. And I think one way to really understand surrender is to look at its opposite, which is control. And take me, for example, I'm a professional dominatrix. People reach out to me because they want to make their fantasies a reality. And in a sense, people think, oh, you're a dominatrix. That means you're this demanding bitch who always gets what she wants, you know? <laughs> right. And there's nothing further from the truth. You know, it's my job to sort of guide this experience, to bear witness, to um, make sure that my partner is being safe, and ultimately to help my partner let go and to surrender. Um, yeah. So if anything, I'm more of the giver in the dynamic um, yeah. and the like submissive is the receiver. Like it's a way of um, maybe giving them the experience of surrender in a really safe and controlled environment. And that probably ripples out into our lives in different ways where we feel more confident. Like it's just pushing out of your comfort zone, which I've talked about a ton, right? And mm. then it's easier in real, quote, real life, whatever that would be. 
Oh, it's so true. I mean, in my personal life, you know, professionally, I do dominatrix work. I'm a dominant. But in my professional life, in kink and sex, I like to switch. I like to sort of play both sides of that coin. And, you know, I discovered a lot about control and surrender. So in kink, you're engaging in these activities consciously. The, the stigma around kink is that it's abuse, it's violence, but play partners, before they can even start playing, you have to build this whole foundation, right? You have to communicate and talk about boundaries and limits and safe words. You know, there's a lot that goes into um, play before you even get started. So we do this type of communication purposefully so that we can trust and feel safe because it's really hard to surrender if you don't trust, if you don't feel a sense of safety. Oh, 100%. Um, it's yeah. like, it, that's like integral to it. Absolutely. And everything is agreed upon in advance. And the key word here is consent. The submissive or the person on the receiving end has just as much power, really, at the end of the day, as the dominant. Um, they both have partnership. They both have choice. Mm -hmm. um, if we're going to look outside of the kink and BDSM realm into just what we can call normal life, if you will, <laughs> yeah. um, control is sort of like this lack of trust with reality. It's uh, this unconscious control means that there's no trust. You want to control something. You want to control someone. It's because you don't trust it. Um, and I think that instead of being sorry. a dominator, thinking that I'm trying to control. Oh, no, that's a so see, sorry. We can't control in this world. I, <laughs> I have that's, to just surrender. Get home. That's right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I think it's a, a perfect example. <laughs> Thank you, universe. Thank I know, you so exactly. Much. <laughs> um, you know, and at the end of the day, I'm not really controlling my partner. I'm really connected to my partner. I'm in tune with what they're craving and what they're desiring. They want me to have the power. Yeah. You know, it's not really like I go in there and I'm like, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to control you and do whatever I want. And my submissive is like, oh, well, I guess that's cool. You know, it's not really <laughs> how it goes. Um, and you know, there's a difference between that submission and that surrender. Um, it's more like, let's play. Yes. Like let's dance. Yes. You know, the steps can I lead and you follow let's have a tango you know um and that's yeah. really what kink is and if we could apply that more into our lives just imagine how much more freedom um and choice and options that we would have you know okay that said I like that you said that because I wanted to ask you about it like personally for you because um it seems like you've done these this work and if you want to call it that just it's it is like self work of you know pushing yourself and allowing yourself to do these things and so how has that reflected in your own life like how have you personally surrendered and you know was it hard when you felt called into your line of work like trusting your path when people can be judgmental about these things mm, thank you for asking when i started working as a dom i was early 20s and what appealed to me in the beginning initially was sort of that surface level of what kink is and I had this perspective of like I'm gonna make good money I don't have to take off my clothes I don't have to have sex with anyone mm -hmm. I get treated like a queen I get you know I get to you know get spoiled and that was sort of my limited perspective of what that this work was it wasn't until really sort of doing my own personal work and diving deeper into what kink was that I realized that there was so much more to it. There was such a like um, sacredness to this sort of exchange where I was yeah. really witnessing at people at their most vulnerable and I was supporting them and I was, you know, encouraging them to let go into that aspect of themselves that doesn't always get a lot of attention and a lot of light because of the stigmas and the, the repressions and the societal traditions that we have to sort of follow in order to feel accepted in this world. So as I started doing my own work and, and realizing the ways that I feel like I need to create safety is the sort of limited tunnel vision way. Like I'm talking a little bit more about control in the sense of not trusting myself, not trusting life, not trusting the universe and how that sort of constricts. Like you can almost feel like when you think about controlling something, it's like your body starts to like close down a little bit. Your heart totally, constricts, totally. right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm sure you can relate, right? To a situation where you just so badly wanted something. Like maybe you really mm -hmm. wanted a job or you wanted to stay in a relationship. Um, and you just invested so much energy 
into like, oh, holding on, like, I want this, you know? And for yeah. whatever reason, it doesn't work out, the relationship ends, the job doesn't work out, and maybe you're devastated and you go through a period of mourning and grieving. Um, and then down the road, right, something even fucking better comes along, something that you didn't even know that was gonna be better. And you're almost like, thank goddess that mm -hmm. that didn't happen, that that didn't work out. I had no idea. And it's only in this like hindsight 2020 vision that we realize, you know, wow, if I could just surrender and trust the universe that something better's on the horizon, I wouldn't have been kicking and screaming and expending all of this energy uh, towards something that wasn't meant to be. Um, you yeah. just hit on, you just hit on like every topic that I've been talking about in this episode <laughs> in my other segments, like, and great minds think alike, girl. I know, right. <laughs> I mean, and, um, and what you said, like it, it did provide you like in those beginning stages, you probably just, you, you got this greater human understanding. And even when we're judged in like situations, like if you were judged by what you do or something, it just, it's those people not understanding. It's like, I, I don't know. I'm so over judging and, and being judged and I don't care as much. I think part of it's a product of age as well. The older I get, the less yeah. I care. But, yeah. um, but I think that when you do see that side of humanity that you probably are way more inclined to go, Oh, well, you just, you just aren't showing it all right now, but it's there. Yeah. So you know, and, and when I started working as a dom, I didn't tell people what I was doing. Actually, I led, the, led this sort of double okay. life. My boyfriends didn't know I was doing it. I kept it wow. totally secret. I was in the closet. I was totally <laughs> terrified about being judged and somehow, you know, exposing myself in a way that maybe didn't fit into this idea of image that I really was holding on to. Right. And when I finally realized, you know, I'm not doing anything illegal. I'm not doing anything that I think is morally wrong in any way. Um, in fact, I enjoy it. And I think it's fun when I started to like surrender into like who I truly was and started to bring that out to others. It gave other people permission to be more of who they are. And I started to attract people that were interested in learning more and wanting to experience that aspect of themselves and, and felt like they, they could trust me in that ex exploration. And what a, what a gift, you know, yeah. like in, 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 as a Dom, I don't look at my partner's submission you know, as like, I don't feel entitled to it. I, I feel like that is such a gift. And if my partner is able to trust me and let go so deeply and completely, that's a gift for us both. And that just feels so good. And then I'm able to trust, I'm able to let go as well. I trust that my partner is gonna let me know if something's awry or something's not yeah. working. Um, and, and it's like, it's this transcendent sort of experience in a sense, you know, and it's just beautiful. It's really, really beautiful what you can, you can accomplish when you have surrender. Totally. What would you say to people who are afraid to surrender or stuck in that resistance of their own truth? Yeah. You know, but I say, if you want to start feeling into surrender more, rule number one is breathe. No joke. <laughs> breathe because there's this aspect where we want to do everything from our heads we want to do everything from our minds but really if we can come from a place of our hearts um, the mind is there to sort of serve that wisdom that inner wisdom and being able to breathe into a situation that you're like I'm not trusting I don't like this or I want to control it if you could just take a moment and just find your breath go into your body find the ground underneath your feet, and then just breathe into the fear, breathe into the mistrust, breathe into the control. You'll feel a sense of expansion, you know? Um, and it can really start that simply. Like we have the power. Like we yeah, have the that's power. The one thing, that's the one thing we can always do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we can always like <laughs> sit here and take a breath, right? It feels good too, right? It I mean, does. Just, Absolutely. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yes. I say start there. Um, with yourself, with your body, with something as sacred as your breath and just breathe and see if you can tune in to that inner wisdom in your heart, that inner wisdom, the little voices that maybe you're, you're not so sure about and see if you can tap into that. Um, I think that's actually a really great way to start in, in finding surrender. 
I'm surrendering right now. My daughter just walked up. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have to open a Coke. Hold on one second. Oh, absolutely. No problem. <laughs> hi, hi, how are you? She said hi. Can you say hi, hi. to Miss Kimmy? Hi. <laughs> this is Gigi. She's beautiful. Thank you. How are you feeling? I mean, right. even you, know, you as a parent, I mean, you, you probably toe the line between, you know, what is protecting your kids and what's in service to them and what's control, right? I'm sure like it goes, it ripples out into your family life as well, right? Absolutely. And, you know, it, it is a struggle because you're like, how much do I tell them? How much do I reveal? Because so many people hold that part of themselves back. Like, um, I mean, I can think of a lot actually where they will say, oh, I'll never tell my kid I did X, you know, or this. And um, that's a, that's a tough line to walk because I want to be honest and I want to model honesty and truth with my children. So you have to figure out, cause my other daughter is about to be 15. And so she asks hard questions sometimes. And we have some actual discussions that are honest. And I know that there are a lot of other parents that would probably take issue with that in some way, but we just have to find our path in that and do it the best we can. Beautiful. And yeah, that's what it really is about, right? Doing the best you can. Yeah. And nobody has the answers really. <laughs> I mean, but if we can find the truth and find our breath and just return to ourselves in those moments and be present, then that's where it's at. You know, um, we're getting close to being out of time. So I wanted to just see if there was anything else that you wanted to share about surrender or just about anything that you feel called to share before we go. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You know, there's one thing I just wanted to touch about one of my favorites subjects is sex okay so think about the Mine orgasm too. i could talk you know, about all day for us to talk about it all orgasm, day <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, great, great. So. Um, in order to achieve orgasm, there, there is a sense of needing to surrender. And when you're actually in the middle of having an orgasm, you're in the middle of climax, there's actually parts in your brain that turn off. They totally shut down. And it's usually the parts that are related to being in charge of control in some sense. So in order to sort of have orgasm and to have this ultimate pleasure state, you have to surrender. And I think like, just think about that potentiality of surrender, bringing you that much pleasure, and then trust that being able to submit into surrender or to release into surrender is going to bring you that, that pleasure. That's going to bring you to a higher place of understanding. A hundred percent. Yes. I'm, yeah. I'm into that. Um, uh, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, we're, we're women and a lot of women have some issues around that. And so I think that this is a really good, um, example of another way that we probably can embrace our surrender right absolutely absolutely and yeah, yeah and I, i'm just super honored that you know the universe has brought us together that we can talk about this subject it feels really good to to revisit this it's it's such an important thing and i'm glad that you're bringing it to the public me too i'm I'm just thrilled that, that I reached out and you said yes. Thank you so much. And if people want to find you, they can find you on Instagram at Kimmy Inch, K-I-M-I-I-N-C-H. And I'll put all the links up with everything. Also at Dommy Dolls, D-O-M-I-D-O-L-L-Z or at DommyDolls.com. And they can find all about your work. Did I miss anything? Is there any other place? No, you got it perfectly. Yeah, I offer everything from therapy sessions to kink sessions, the classes, all sorts of stuff. So yeah, um, I would be happy to... To hear from anyone who's interested in my work and tell them more about it and you're back and forth from austin and new york so i'm yeah yay i hope to catch up with you in real life really soon because I, I plan on it that would be yeah, wonderful me too for sure thank you so much i really appreciate it thank uh, you so much Amy. that was fantastic thank you so much yeah oh great i'm so glad you feel that way i'm super excited to meet you and i and it's so much fun so thank you so much i love i love your perspective as well so oh I thank you I, oh my god i love every single thing you said i have chills and um so tell me can i send you maybe a dropbox with this video would you like that I Absolutely. And what the plan would be is like after you've aired your um, podcast, mm -hmm. I was just going to put it on the uh, Dummy Dolls uh, YouTube channel with all your like, please include every link that you want me to include okay. uh, with the video. And I'll also promote the podcast and then I'll also promote the video. So I'll be promoting the podcast first and then I'll promote the video afterwards. So we'll do double double promotion. Awesome. So, Yay. Yeah. Thank you for, uh, thank you for being cool with that. I, I appreciate oh my God. it. I love having the content and, yeah. and I'm happy to cross promote. 
other too. powerful women as well. So always, I'm always the same way. The more, the better I say. Amen. So fantastic. So thank oh. you. I'm stoked to be included on that. That's exciting. You're so, so welcome. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So good. I'll email you a Dropbox of the video and just anything else you need. And then, um, like I said, I'll make a graphic. I'll, I'll pick some quotes that you said and, uh, I'll choose those, but if you prefer a different one, then just tell me and whatever picture you'd like me to use. Uh, I, I just make a little graphic, but I'll definitely send it to you for approval before I post it. And, um, and, and any you, changes are fine. Do you want me to send you some image options or do you want to look through my Instagram and pick something? Yeah, send me a couple pictures you like. I usually crop it kind of a longer portrait. So right. you know, okay. something like that. That's yeah, amazing. You probably see you're yeah. the best. Yay. Oh, you are. <laughs> I know, me too. I'm so glad to connect with you. And thank you so much again. Really thank honored. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, thank you take care. And you too. love you and your family. Thanks. Same to you. Bye. Bye.